Welcome to this, the second video in my Surviving Mars tutorial series. In this video, we will go through the overlays in the game and we will uh, look at some of the menus, including the research tree, the maps, the planetary map, and um, milestones, and uh, and so on. We will also look at, the, uh, at some of the icons at the very top of the game, and uh, we will learn how to how the uh, what most of the things means basically and welcome to the game itself we have this little plateau right here or this little area right here and as you can see it's a lot of it's a grid system. Every one of these uh, squares is basically a so or a sector um, that can be scanned. And when you are scanning them, you will get some information about what is underground. That can be mineral deposits, that can or metal deposits, water deposits, um, and and similar things. So basically. Um, you get all your resources using the um, this these sectors and um, and when you scan them uh, during the the setup we did in video one we um, have continued or we have selected one called fast scanning and that is basically that you allow the game to scan these sectors extremely fast. Um, basically more or less two sectors per, per sol. Um, and um, and those sectors are very important, as you probably can guess. Some of them are not that important that those on the top of them, of the uh, mountains or the, uh, the hills or whatever you would like to call them, but those on the same floor as uh, where we are going to, to start is a bit more important. So basically I would say all the sectors from all the way up here all the way down to right here you can see my the little box i have and it will continue that way um this one is not that important because it's basically just a cliff you can also see that the buildable area is not very high so those that has more than a certain number i can't even say you can see 12 percent down here it, it's an okay area, but it's not really that great. Uh, but basically everything that is in the, in this level, uh, including these dips and uh, craters and whatever they can be, and a little hill over here, they, they are very important to scan early on. Um, when you have done that, then we can continue scanning these up here and get those scanned too. And the same with this cliff here and those on the edge and, and so on and so on. Um, we are not going to start scanning yet because I want to talk a little bit about the overall um, overlay you can see here. Uh, in the top left corner, you got two boxes. You got no active research and you got exploration. Uh, this is basically your message area where you will get messages about what is happening in the game. Um, it can be in this case, there's two posts right now one is called active research select a tech to research we will come back to that in a bit and the other one exploration select a sector to scan so it basically tells us that i'm not scanning anything at the moment please allow me to do that or please select a sector so i can scan that uh, at the lower left corner you have the speed options uh, you can see pause is basically just space and then you select the, uh, the speed using your plus and minus buttons on your keyboard. Um, so we can easily do that. And uh, you will see that. And you will see that the. Um, that currently it is just activated. Uh, I'm just. I'm clicking that one again. Um, so I'm pressing space to start and then I'm using plus and minus on my keyboard and you can see that 
if we're checking over here on these buttons, you will check, you will see that they are changing using plus and minus. Uh, I'm using my numeric keyboard, so I have plus and minus on the top uh, right side of my keyboard, and that's the two I'm using. Of course, you can also use plus and minus on beside the numbers, but it's a little bit, yeah, it's basically the same. Um, so you, you can use whatever you want. You can also, of course, use your mouse to change the speed um, to go into whatever you want. Um, here we have the, the day counter. Uh, a day on Mars is called a sol. So in this case, we have day number one or sol number one. And this is how far the day has gone until now. Normally, the, the game doesn't start immediately at zero. It starts a little bit later when the sun is actually up or has been uh, has risen um, when the sunrise have happened. And um, and you can see there's uh, solar time, six hours for Sol. Martian days consist of nearly 25 Earth hours, which is one of the reasons why, um, for example, the Curiosity and... Uh, um perseverance rover that is on mars right now they are their teams are actually living in martian days um so they are basically working one hour longer or have a, they have a schedule that is 25 hours compared to where everyone else basically have 24 hours um then you have a lot of buttons here at the, uh, down here that's basically all your commands or all your menus and, and similar the first one build menu i don't think i need to say much about what that includes we will check it out later uh, map overview that's basically what we are looking at right now uh, getting back to the map overview and over is uh, either press m or you can use your uh, mouse wheel if you have such one of those and simply scroll downwards that means it's zooming out and you can zoom in by uh, using your um, uh, your mouse wheel moving forward so i'm zooming in right now as you can see and i can zoom pretty close in and i can i'm zooming out again and it clicks out to the map overview the next one is called resupply uh, we will get into that in uh, in a little bit later it's not that important right now uh, but soon it will and it is especially when we begin to get uh, or when we need to get the colonist to our base or to our colony here on mars so it's it's not for this video it's going to be a little bit further the next one research we'll get into that in a bit but we can actually look at it all yeah okay let, let, let's look at it right now um, you have a research tree Standard in many games where you get upgrades and new buildings and new stuff that you can do and so on and so on. It's exactly the same here. Um, the game automatically does research for you. You can see that this one up here, the recon and expansion, the first one is already being researched. I have not started it. It's doing it automatically. Um, it's not a very expensive research, as you can see. The cost is only a thousand research, and you get three thousand three hundred per day. Of course, if you had a a research point that was only six hundred, it would take more than one sol to do that single research there. Um, so that's why the research number in the settings is and also for your sponsor and, and so on and so on, is rather important. Later on, you will be able to get um, additional research. That is, for example, when you have research buildings, it is when you're outsourcing research, We can act, you can see it down here, uh, where you can give 200 millions and then you get 1,000 research in the next five sols. So basically you get, um, so you, you get a little bit more research if you want to boost it um, it's not very it's not something i think we need to go into right here it's only if there's something we need a little bit more uh, and a little bit faster but otherwise we will just take it as it is um if i 
go to one of these, I can press them. And as you can see, I'm using the left mouse button uh, to queue for research. And if I'm control uh, and control left mouse button simply says queue to top. And the queue is over here. So you can select up to five. As you can see, this one is not listed. It's because it's an automatic research being done. And uh, if I select something else, it will overrule the automatic research. And then it will, so if I want this one, for example, Explore AI, uh, it generates 100, sol, uh, 100 research per sol for each RC Explorer vehicle. That's one of the vehicles we get when the rocket lands. Multiple vehicles results in collaboration losses. And you can see again, I can queue it for research and it will show up over here. If you want to remove a thing from your research, press the right mouse button no and it's, research. and you can see it came up with a voice saying no active research. It's basically because it has no uh, research that you have selected. There is still the automatic one going on, but your research, there's none you have selected. It will pop up quite a lot during the gameplay that, uh, that sentence, no active research. I can guarantee that already now. Um, as you can see, you can only have five in uh, in this one. So it's about being very, a little bit careful and, but in, especially here in the beginning, it's not that important if you, what you select. So I could say, I want this, 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 and this. And then you can see I got all of them. Um, maybe I'll, I think I'll remove that one. I was using right mouse button again, but I, this time I clicked on the logo itself. Um, the social one is not that important right now as it gets, um, as it, it's more, uh, it's something you will begin to use during uh, when colonists get here. Right now there's no real need for it, but of course in going forward, we will get something else. Um, so now we have four research and if I go out again and just run it at normal speed and go back into the research tab, you will notice that this one, the automatic one, it is not counting upwards. But on the other hand, this one, water reclamation, it is actually being uh, researched right now. It's at 14% slowly. It, it won't do it when I'm in here, but if I close and wait, a few seconds, you can actually see the research progress right here. Uh, so if we go up, it will still say, okay, uh, don't know why. If I'm changing that one, it will hopefully change a little bit faster. Let's try to see if that, yeah. Um, now it has changed 28%. Uh, if you want to make sure that it is actually researching, there's another way you can do it. Um, if we're closing down the uh, the menu again, you can see at the very top here, there is a number up here, 28%. That one is basically the level of your current research. Now you can see it changed to 8 to 41 and it will continue to rise. So uh, I'm going to pause it again. But we know that it is being researched. And as you could see, the automatic research that the game started itself is not counting. So it will only count as soon as it hit number four in this case or number five if you have five in in the queue then the automatic research will continue all of these menus right here recon and exp expansion terraforming biotech engineering robotics uh, physics social and breakthrough they all have linked to each other basically um for example the terraforming is a really good example. It gives you, number one, the ability to terraform Mars. The next one is, it gives you the ability to get a RC dozer and a basically a, a remote controlled bulldozer that will help you making landscape projects. Um, it's really a nice little rover you can get there. Um, planetary survey, that you can find some anomalies around the planet and then you can later on send rockets to these anomalies to get them checked out. Really, really, really good to have that. Um, 
topology and and you can basically read about it all the way down um interplanetary research projects where you uh unlocks the import greenhouse gases improve atmosphere and capture ice uh, asteroids improve water special product Objects available or accessible uh, via via the planetary view. We will look at the planetary view in a few moments. So all of these have different treats, and some of them might also have a, a little drawback. It's not very often it happens, but most mostly it has some positive things like new buildings, new ways to do things, um, improvements, upgrades, and and so on and so on. Um, it, some of them might even give you money. Uh, or research or something like that and can be used multiple times um, for example this one the mass crowdfunding you can see receive a one time grant of one billion uh, dollars in this case of funding so it can only be researched once but others can be um, but this one for example um increases research provided by uh, by sponsor by 100 so that's also a good one um let me just try to see if i can find one that has something um this one for example licensed martian technology for use back on earth earn 500 million uh in funding this tech is repeatable and can be researched multiple times it gives a little bit itself what it actually does. So you get 500 every time you're using it. Don't overuse it, um, but it's it's a great one to have. And even if you are making these selections yourselves, or if you are just letting the autopilot run and uh, do the work for you, or the game do the research for you, then uh, you will be still be able to see these these as not researched because they are repeatable so when you have researched it and there's nothing else uh, the game will not number one the game will not research it uh, and number two you're the only one that can activate it um, so when you have the full tree completed which i have experienced a couple of times um, then i still have a few that is not that seems like they are not researched in, in reality they are because they are repeatable so that's also a, a good one to to remember um i will close down this one and then we will look at the command center it's basically all your information about what do you have on your planet what how much money do you have how much research do you have a soul how many rockets do you have how many much power do you have all of those things that is important to know a lot of these informations is also found somewhere else in the top level up here you will find a lot of the same information but once in a while it's great to get a, a little bit better overview instead of just looking up here and oh by the way oh i got 41 in research i got so much water and so much power and and so on then it's actually quite nice to be able to go in inside here and look at it um and you can see it has different uh under sub menus so graph for example you will see colonists transportation buildings power oxygen it basically is a graph to tell you a lot of stuff if you like to watch those i've, I've never really used a graph uh, buildings the type of buildings you have storage decorations residential terraforming other buildings and and so on and so on um you can we will we can look at this later on uh, but right now it's not that important. Um, domes basically just tells you how, what domes you have, how many, how the the different um, yeah health and sanity and experience and and a lot of other things up here that um, that you will get when you get colonists. It's not important in the beginning. Um, we got of course colonists. I don't even. And you can see they have again different filters uh some flaws per quirks uh perks interests specialization age group problematic colonists uh unemployed colonists homeless unable to work and able to work and for the entire colony and you can see again we got these um 
areas or these uh, icons up here. We will get back, back to those later. Um, transportation. What is being done? Who is doing the work? Um, so, for example, the drone hubs. Uh, we will see all the, uh, the drone hubs and how much work they have and the workload, the information, actions, all of that stuff we will see here. Um, power grid is just about how much power do you have? Who is producing it? Who is consuming it? How much power do you have stored? How much it's charging and, and so on and so on. How much changes there right now and, and so on and so on. Uh, live support grid. It's about the water and oxygen and building colors. Basically, you can go and select different colors if you want. Um, personally, I love this white one, but you can select whatever you want. It has nothing to do with the game uh, except uh, the aesthetic. So it's not that important to change. But if you like the, the cherry blossom, go ahead, do that. If you love the rainforest, go ahead and do that. If you love the terraform, go ahead and do that. Uh, if you love the red steel, go ahead and do that. It has no influence on the game itself, except the buildings will look a little bit different. But I'm going with the surviving Mars as it's the one I'm used to and the one I think looks the best. Um, but it's a personal opinion. Um, you can also rename your colony either up here or down here. So if you did not decide to have a colony name in the beginning, but later on you want, you think, oh, I got this great idea for this uh, this colony, uh, for name for the colony, then you can change it in uh, in this menu too. The next one, uh, milestones. Basically, all the milestones you can complete on this map or in this game. When you have completed all of them, you have basically won the game. Um, and they will always restart when you start a new game. So it's always a completely different game you, you basically play. Um, and you get the same uh, number of uh, milestones. And once in a while, the, the, uh, the female voice coming in um, will say milestone complete. And it could be that you have been yeah, scanning an anomaly, or you have found water on Mars, or you have constructed a dome, or you have produced some food or you have scanned all sectors or you have researched a break breakthrough or so on and so on and so on. Some of them, as you can see, takes a lot longer time probably than others. So for example, um, find water on Mars. That's not very difficult. There's water on Mars. We already know that both in real life, but also in this game. Why should they have this one if there wasn't a water? Um, so it's one of the earliest one you get. The same with scan and anomaly. You will also get that. Um, you will also get some uh, research points from launching a rocket from Mars and, and so on and so on. You can see that the toughest one is 40% workers in workshops. That is a really, really tough one. Um, and it takes a lot of time. I've never gone to this one. I've completed, um, I think... Out of all of these, I have cl completed everything except this one and these two here. Um, maybe also the all uh, sponsor goals. Everything else I have uh, been able to, to make. So it's a very nice little one, but not that important. Um, mission profile, basically an overview of what you got from from it earlier when you started the game or when you were setting up the game um, so we have our sponsor we have our coordinates we have how much research we get per sol um, beside the base research we have um, rare metal prices large rock payloads and all of those things that we selected earlier and you have some additional goals over here have 30 colonists on mars and you get this one which is a basic dome prefab. So a prefab, yeah. You get a, a dome that you can build. Uh, have a Martian-born colonist, five free supply parts. We will get into that later. Build a machine part factory, a polymer factory, and an electronics factory. And then you get 30 engineer applicants. And applicants is basically 
people on Earth that wants to live on Mars. So in this case, we are looking at 30 engineers that wants to go from Earth to Mars to live. Um, the next one, generate 3000 uh, research per sol, and we have already completed that. So we already get uh, 30 science or scientist applic applicants um, additional on what we already have. And then the last one here, have 10 Martian born specialists and zero out of 10 because, well, we have none right now. And you can see what we get is a mega dome prefab. Um, and prefabs in this case is basically buildings that you actually don't have access to, but you are able to build them anyway. Um, these buildings will be something you can get later on um, by researching. But once in a while, you get them as a kind of reward for something you have done, even though you haven't researched them. But they only count as one building or two buildings or four buildings, how many prefabs you got. But we will look at that in a bit. And the last one is a planetary view. Well, not much to say. Uh, it tells you a little bit about the colony, some very, very basic things later on when we get to into some terraforming and and so on uh, there will be more icons on this planet shown uh, but we will look at that in a later video it's not something that will happen within this little video here that's 100 percent sure so we will look at that way later um then you got over here there's a radio where you can manage your uh music if you want to have music playing in the background from the radio stations here, as you can see, I'm playing the Surviving Mars uh, music right now and the volume I can set down here. Uh, below and beyond, I can't even remember what it is. Um, and I have added another one that is not a part of the game. Um, this is a, the Stellaris uh, soundtrack. And the Stellaris is one of the other Paradox Interactive games um, and um, I have added the music from there. It's a mod that I have installed. It's the only mod I'm using in this menu or in this game. Um, you don't need to have it. It's uh, it's just a personal preference. Um, the rest of the uh, radio stations here are something that you can buy on, the, for example, Steam. Um, they, I think it's two euros or two dollars per radio station or something like that it's not that expensive and if you like to have different uh, radio stations fine if you don't like to have different radio stations you will still have a few for example you will have the surviving mars you will have the official mars radio or official mars channel which for those of you who have played city skylines is what is called an official mars radio so it's the same uh, exactly the same music exactly the same uh, small uh, burps and uh, and talks and, and so on but there's no ads big difference the ads have been removed because of course why should there be ads so you get so you don't get the, the ads in this game which is a nice thing I do have to say but this one was basically added to city skylines as a kind of promotion for surviving Mars um, and it turns out that it has become a very popular radio station to listen to in um, in City Skylines because the music is so good and really, really enjoyable. Um, and then, of course, we got the last one, the main menu, where there's a few things. Um, of course, there's options where you can select a lot of different things. Um, I will let you go into that yourself. There is a photo mode where you basically can move around uh, using your um, mouse wheel that you press down and then you can zoom in and zoom out and you can uh, find a good angle and then you can change different things. For example, you can right here, you can have a free camera, which is um, and then you can move it ar around a lot easier. So you can see uh, right now I'm using W pressing W and it will slowly move forward if I keep um, if I press uh, control it moves faster now I begin to press S to move out and you can see I'm zooming out again um, I can go a little bit to the 
right in this case and pressing control makes it a little bit faster and, and so on and so on and there's a lot of things you can do here um, and uh, the, if you press the alt key you can uh, right now the you, you, you can't see the mouse cursor but if I'm pressing the alt you can you get the mouse cursor back and then you can turn off the the free camera uh, motion blur yeah of course if there's motion in it um, you will be able to see it. It's mostly when you have some drones and, and similar or, um, or something moving in, in your photo. You can get that vignette, of course, changing the, the vignette around the, uh, the picture. Exposure, make it brighter, darker. I'm going for something in the middle. Fog density, basically you add fog to the picture. Um, depth of field. Uh, can't really be seen right here because we have a focus depth that is none. But if I'm moving this one, um, is it not working? Okay, uh, defocus strength, you can see. And then we can actually find a spot. And you can see that I can change things. So it's a it's a play between these three that you can that you can work with. Uh, so if you want to take a picture, let's say of this rock right here. Um, and you want to make it make sure that it is in focus. Uh, now you can see it's out of focus, but I can then uh, select the focus depth, and then I can say, okay, we got it right there. Uh, I want this one to, and this one basically just makes it a little bit more uh, less focused in the back. And you can see this one moves back and forth when the. Um, um, so it's it's something you can play with. Um, it, it's not that important too, but it, it's it's a nice little one. Uh, time of day you can select basically night time or early morning or in the afternoon or back to night or whatever you would like. If you want to take a picture like this, that's what you can do. Um, I'm probably moving it to approximately here. That's more or less. Uh, FOV field of view. In, zoom in, zoom out, um, and bloom. Can't really be seen right here because there's no nothing that can bloom. But when you get buildings, you will be able to see it. Uh, of course, reset makes everything back to as it was. The standard things. Take screenshot. Uh, takes a screenshot and post it or places it in a folder. It will show up which folder it is automatically. So you can see in my case it it has found this um, and the uh, toggle UI basically just remove it resume so you can uh, so life will continue while you are in photo mode and you can pause it again um, and close of course then you got um, encyclopedia tells you a lot about the different things so for example if you have, um, if you want to read about the vehicles, and let's say you want to read about the rocket, you can do it here. If you want to read about the uh, dozer, you can do it here. Um, it's a very handy little thing. I'm personally not using it a lot, uh, but it's it's a nice little addition to the game. Um, and once in a while, you are able to to go into something. You can, for example, see. Um, in this case where it was game mechanics, the, the core mechanics of Surviving Mars, I can then press uh, Surviving Mars sometimes, at least. Um, but these, uh, you can see they are a little bit highlighted or yellowish, and they basically just shows what over here and uh, power and, uh, and similar. So it's something you, you can work with. Um, but as said, it's not the most important thing. Restart map if you want to restart the whole map uh, because you have done something, done make a mistake, you can do that. Main menu, go back to the main menu of the game and quit, go out of the game completely. Um, save and load, I don't think we need to go into that too much right now. At the very top, you got uh, a few other things. You got funding, how much funding do you get? How much was the last export? How much have you totally exported? How much income was there in the last sol? Um, research how much 
how many research points do we have? Uh, and how is the current research going? Power, how much is produced, how much is on demand, how much is stored, what is the capacity currently? If you have multiple um, batteries that you have plopped down all over the surface and they are not completely full, you can see it here and stored power lasts this number of hours. Um, so in this case, I don't have anything. So of course it's zero hours. You have the same with life support, uh, both uh, O2 and or oxygen and water. Exactly the same things basically as for, for power. How much is produced, how much is on demand, how much is being stored and, and all of those things. You get the same for the metals, uh, concrete, food, rare metals. Those are resources you can only find on the surface. So you can't, well, you can't actually, I think you can uh, get concrete from earth, but it's very expensive. So it's better to use it, get it from the Martian soil instead. Much easier and much, much better. Metal is something you can find on the surface too, or in mines or similar. Uh, food is something you begin to produce when you get colonists and domes, basically to keep them alive. Um, and you get uh, rare metals. That's something we will find on the surface here and that we can uh, mine and we can use uh, to either create... Um, so there is a consumption of it because we can actually use it to create something in the... I think it's... Uh, is it electronics? I think it's electronics that can use it. Uh, or that uses this to create their uh, their product. But you can also export it. Um, so you can send it back to Earth. And every one of these is currently at a 25 uh, million. So one rare metal is 25 million you can get in your bank, bank account. Uh, it will be sent back on a rocket. Uh, that goes back to Earth and it will happen automatically unless you uncheck it. But we will come back to that in a later video. Um, polymers, machine parts, fuel and electronics, things that we produce on the planet. And that is important to keep our um, colony alive, um, maintenance um, and of course also production. So they are using uh, machine parts to do something else or to build buildings or to maintain buildings. The same with electronics. They are, can be used to either build buildings or to uh, maintain, uh, maintain buildings or to build drones or what or upgrades or whatever it can be. Um, exotic minerals, something that you, um, you might be lucky to find on the, not on the surface, but maybe below the surface, if you have the below and beyond. Uh, DLC. Um, if you can also get it using um, an asteroid, which is why it's called Beyond, because you can send a rocket to an asteroid and mine that asteroid for, for example, exotic minerals. And these minerals can be used to either export uh, or to produce something. Um, Sorry you, you, sorry, you can't export them. Uh, my mistake. Um, waste rock. Something that most extractors produce alongside their core product. For example, we can have a concrete extractor, which we will place right here. This is the concrete location, uh, as this is the concrete symbol. And uh, that will produce, of course, concrete, but it will also produce waste rock. In the beginning of the game, waste rock is not that important, but later on you can actually make it into either liquefied form, uh, making, I can't remember what it exactly is you can make later on. Um, and you can also use it to make um, concrete even further into the game. So, but in the beginning, it's just a material that is annoying. You also use it to have uh, terraforming projects. So for example, if I want to build a, a ramp from down here and from, let's say that you want to build a ramp from 
from down here and you want to build it all the way up to here, uh, then you will either get some uh, waste rocks or you will use some waste rocks to and for that project. Um, but in, but right now it's not that important to to think about. And then you got a few other things. You got a uh, number of prefabs buildings that you are able to build already now. Um, that's in this case some uh, two moisture vapor vaporators. You got one sensor tower. You got one moxie. You got one oxygen tank. You got what one basic dome. You got a living complex. You got a recharge station. You got a self-sufficient domes, uh, water tower, sterling uh, generator, concrete extractor fuel pre, uh, refinery and a drone hub and you can see we got two of those moisture uh, vaporators we got uh, two living complexes we got four recharge stations we got six sterling sterling generators so that's already a lot of things we can build um and the sterling yeah we will we will look into that later uh, how many drones do you have currently there's none of course on mars but you will be able to uh when we land a rocket you will get a uh, a, num a a few drones that will do things in the beginning like starting building the first buildings and, and so on and so on um how many drone prefabs do you have how many damaged dr drones do you have how many destroyed drones do you have uh, of course the drone the, the uh, damaged drones can be uh, fixed the destroyed can't be fixed, but you will be able to um, salvage them for parts. So that's a good thing to know. Then we got how many colonists do you have? How many is Earthborn, Martianborn? How many is children, youth, adult, middle, middle-aged, and seniors? Um, tourists, how many tourists do you have? I'm not very really keen on the tourist aspect of the game, but that's a whole different thing. Uh, homes, how many homes do you have? How many vacant uh, spots do you have? Both for residential, nursery and hotels. Hotels is of course for uh, mostly for tourists, but you can actually say to your own colonists that it's okay to take a holiday on a specific location. Um, homeless, how many homeless people do you have and how many uh, residential slots has been disabled? If you for example have a building where there's 14 slots and you decide, okay, only 10 can live in this one. You remove four of them. And that's disabled uh, residential slots. The last thing here, jobs. How many jobs do you have? Uh, it's a tap we will look more into when we get further into the game and we get some colonists because it's a little bit difficult to explain right now where the numbers are basically just zero. So we will look into that later on. 